uh, Greg, since since you are our first speaker, I'm going to throw out a question to you. Um, it, it sounds like synthetic identity theft fraud is recognized by MasterCard as a you know as a growing threat. Can you share any of the information on what MasterCard is doing to address it? Yeah, sure, Paige. Um, <clears throat> so I alluded to a little bit of it uh, based on the prior question, um, but yes. Simply stated, we we do recognize uh, this as a threat, as do many of our banks, our partners, um, and we've recognized, as I stated in the presentation, just offering zero liability on fraudulent transactions. Um, it's just not enough anymore. Um, if we really want our consumers to embrace a digital life, right? So moving their spend online, giving not only their payment information but also the personal information to set up an account with an Amazon, for example, or a Netflix or whoever it is, um, we've got to fully protect them. Um, so one of the very first things we did, and this is what I alluded to earlier, is in the US market, um, since we're focusing on this market today, it, we we took the step to offer identity theft protection as a, as a card level benefit. So regardless of the type of MasterCard card you have in your purse or wallet, if you go to mastercard.com, uh, you will find a link to enroll in the identity, identity theft protection service. So that was a really, really big step forward. Uh, and again, it's because we, we, we want, we want the consumers, our cardholders to feel the same level of protection around, around their PII data as they do around their card. Um, you know, if something bad happens to any of that information, we're here for them and we'll help them. Um, but then in addition to that, in the past few years, some of you may have seen some of these headlines, but we've invested, especially my own division, the Cyber and Intelligence Division, has made uh, some significant investments, some acquisitions uh, in the technology space. So most recently, the acquisition of the company Risk Recon, uh, and then prior to that, we acquired a company uh, called New Data. Um, both of these companies uh, were, are intended to help our customers, whether it be the banks or even our merchants, our acquirers, uh, any small business owner, uh, to do a better job of understanding, you know, is this is this a human? Like I mentioned earlier, is it the right human? Um, you know, do I have any vulnerabilities uh, in my in my network? You know, in my online presence that could be exploited? Uh, and then how would I go about re repairing those? So th that's. That's what we've done just in the last few years alone. We have more uh, thought going into uh, what else we could do. Because uh, like, I, like I stated in the presentation, we, we firmly believe that a multi-layered approach is necessary. No one of these on its own is sufficient. So we're, we're, we keep building a business case to uh, you know, either make additional investment partnerships or perhaps even additional acquisitions uh, to really fight, uh, fight the risks in, in this space. Well, that really answers one of the, the next question that I had. Are there any providers of all the technologies that you mentioned that, that offer all or at least several of these technologies that help prevent identity theft fraud? So it, it really is not all in one basket from your perspective. No, yeah, it's, it's not. Um, there are Going back to that, re that ITA report I mentioned earlier, um, yeah, that's, that's a really good report. Uh, to not only see who offers what technologies, but in there they 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 basically present a matrix that will show you of the vendors, you know how many of these different technologies you know can you can you find a one stop shop? Now I can tell you reading the report, there is no one vendor you can go to for you know every single one of these technologies. There are some um, off the top of my head. I think Experian and LexisNexis were a couple that uh, checked probably the most boxes. Um, but again, my recommendation is, you know, shop around. Um, you know, I can't, I can't speak to the quality of those technologies in each space. Um, so, you know, take the time to speak with, uh, speak with the vendors and, and see how they differentiate themselves, outperform the, the competition. I mean, a bundle definitely offers advantages or can offer advantages, but you know, don't pursue the bundle just because it's it's easier to to get it all from 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 one vendor. Um, you know, take the time to to see who's who's the best performer uh, in this in the technologies that you that you most wish to offer. Yep, 
makes sense. Certainly our our offering that you mentioned earlier, your free services that you offer to your customers are helpful. Bruno, um, what kind of data are organizations not collecting or not paying enough attention to that can help in detecting a synthetic identity? That's a that's a good question. I think that it's a traditionally uh, many financial institutions we have been collecting uh, data a lot more about, for example, this is financial data for their customers instead of looking for the behavior of the how they manage the device. For example, we haven't seen some financial institutions now moving toward, especially because if looking to financial institutions and how they they deal with one of those uh, digital channels and mobile, it's the, the, the primary one actually, it's the number one. And uh, information like how, for example, the user handle that device, how they type that device in, what kind of device that they have, uh, what the, the screen resolution they have. That's one kind of the, the data point that uh, financial institutions are not paying enough attention and it can be a, a really good weapon to detect synthetic identities. And another one is, of course, uh, looking for partnerships in the industry uh, to uh, using, as a, for example, I mentioned in my presentation, for example, federated learning, that is how I can associate the data, for example, with retail, with the company. Sometimes we have some experimentation about for for example, I was talking about social network, there is a lot of debate. Uh, Institution said that it's a complete waste of time. Some they said, well, we, I can use this as a reference as well. But that's the, the uh, kind of uh, signals that in data that financial institutions are looking for as well. And, and what about outside of organizations? What kind of data should folks look for? You mentioned social. Anything else yeah. that comes to mind? Yeah. Uh, the, for, for example, the, the customer identification program in the United States, I uh, know that it's many financial institutions they have to, to obey, or at least we have to follow in. Uh, it's a kind of regulation that we can use as well as a, as a, as a source. I know that it's many use, but uh, uh, Another, another another information outside the, the, the organization is looking for, okay, you are associated, for example, with this phone, and then let me check with the, the authorize me to check with the, the telco company uh, about, for example, that data. And that's the, 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 the kind of a partnership that I have seen in different markets as well. Makes sense, makes sense. Shamika, uh, aside from directing them to identity, theft.gov, what can businesses do if customers or employees report identity theft? Um, yeah, I would recommend that um, companies, you know, give their employees or customers um, the documentation that they need to dispute any unauthorized charges, um, not to make them jump through any hoops to get that information because it's theirs by right under the, uh, the Fair Credit Reporting Act or the FCRA. Um, and I, you know, um, that would be like my main thing. And of course, you know, you already mentioned like, you know, send them to idsf.gov, but just not getting in their way because, um, you know, customers reporting missing wallets or credit cards or, you know, that information, it could ultimately affect the businesses of the company too. So it's in their interest um, to help them. And if it's an employee, um, then, you know, help the HR, the HR team at your company get involved because certain forms of identity theft, like, uh, tax unemployment benefits, medical, um, those things can all impact your company in the long run. So it just makes more sense to be as cooperative um, and helpful as possible. 